I will just give you a background to the company. Some of you may think of Ikano as a Japanese company or a, or a Shimano and a bicycle company. So I will try my best here. So we are a franchisee. That means we franchise to run the IKEA store for Singapore, Malaysia and Thailand. That means that we have two stores in Singapore, Alexandra and Tampines. One in Damansara and a new one is coming up. Uh, one in Bangkok. We survived the flood and the usual yellow shirts and red shirts disagreements. So, um, and uh, we are also in a shopping centre business, but not in Singapore. You don't see any. You see Capital Land running shopping centres, and that, so along that line, we have shopping centre investments, or we run it like in in Damansara, we call it Ikano Power Centre, and in, like, in Thailand we work with joint ventures, and we had a mega bangla. So we try to build a store and a shopping centre side by side so that we can have a more for revenue and customer visitations. Um, our head office is based in Singapore, so when you go to Tampines, some of the floors are reserved for the head office. Now, that's the background of where we are. Now, you, some of us ask cloud and we, we went through the cloud journey for a while and we're still going through that and we're discovering good ideas from it. Alright, so now this is the endorsement part. So sometimes you say, what did we pick? Or we pick Office 365. You can, come, you can always ask me a question, why 365? Business form processing. Now, um, many of you, when you have, when you're on apply leave or you want to get a PO, so form processing is like your leave form, your outpatient claim form, lots of forms. So these are the things that we were trying to migrate as well because as our, our managers travel, they need to apply for approval to when they travel, they fill in the receipts and they want to get claimed. Otherwise, you know, the, the income tax or the credit card comes late, whatever it is. So these are the two main initiatives I want to talk about. In email and that. So, oops, sorry. So forms. Now, one of the decisions why we went into this was because everyone was traveling. Some were always in Singapore or Malaysia, and they were try the, the people would call them on the phone to connect through VPN to or scan a form, sign it, and scan back. You know, it gets a bit nutcase sometimes. Um, and then some people lose their laptops. Some people have big attachments. I mean, the, the traditional days, if you take a step back and go to 2002 or 2003, many of our email attachments, if your company allows it, is maximum five megabyte maximum 3 megabyte and or you have limits of your quota. So a lot of them who travel or go on long vacation or, or long trips complain that mailbox is full. Then we tell you you need to archive it. You know the usual boring so you archive, clean your mailbox, all don't work. After a while people get skin get thicker. So we we decided that if we have to migrate to scale up to five hundred to even six hundred colleagues or co-workers we call them and if you go from one store when we had our system we had one store in Singapore one store in Malaysia just holding emails so we realized that we can't do this if you're going to go to three stores or ten stores in the three countries or even in Philippines down the road so we, we went through a lot of evaluation we said that okay what will be rejected and what will not be rejected. So the problem with IT is that when the customers, when a, when a person comes to me and says, Pat, I want a big server or a big mailbox, the question is, I want a long string. Not to hang myself, but how long is the string? 10, 10 gigabyte, 10 terabyte, what's the maximum speed? There's a lot of relativity. So we realize that in email, instant messaging, as well as forms, you deal with not unreasonable people. The expectation change. When we had small phones, when we take buses to school and things are cheaper without the internet, things were more tolerable. When we have a modem of 33K, it's acceptable. But change. Okay. So, the, the magic question, how do you persuade the managers and the different uh, stakeholders, as we call them these days, to agree. So we, we came up with a few simple points. 
We know that every one of them complain about mailbox. So we say, Microsoft, for example, or Google, for example, will give you minimum 5 gigabyte or 10 gigabyte. So hey, people say, oh, my mailbox is bigger. So, okay, tick, pass. You, will, you clear the first hurdle. It's like a race, you know. Second thing we tell them that your attachment size is no longer our problem. It's the other <laughs> receiver problem. So, because some companies may have a 5 megabyte limit. Of course, there are tools which I will share with you how we overcome it for them using things that you sent it and uh, sometimes like Dropbox or Google things. Like. But anyway, so we persuaded that let's look at the pain points from a business point of view. Big mailbox size, right here. Yeah. Big mailbox size, big attachment, and it doesn't matter you're in a Mac. Windows XP, Win 7, Linux, it doesn't matter if you're running on an iPhone or a Windows phone or an Android phone. Because the big problem is that with, with hosted things, you have to do a lot of settings, which drives you nuts. And when the phone gets lost, uh, people say, how do, I, how do I protect my privacy and comply? So, we say that well, now you can get it anywhere. So OWA stands for Outlook Web Access. So you, this is good when you don't want to install Outlook on somebody's machine or his machine crash and he said, I can't get my mailbox, I can't do work. Now you can borrow anybody's laptop or a thin client or a Citrix client or anything and say, look, I can log into a browser, I go to this link, I'll get my mail. So it also means that if he goes on a holiday and he goes to a business center, he can still access his mail. And it's secure. So that was the second selling point. So that people who travel love it. Offline reading and archiving. Now, IT also needs to throw in its good case. If a, if a laptop crashes, it takes a while to rebuild everything. So we realize that if we put everything in the cloud, make it thin on the desktop, it doesn't matter whether guy laptop is 10 terabyte hard disk space or what's to it. So now we move away from expectation of you losing your laptop, not encrypting your laptop. If it's all offline in the cloud, the security things goes away. It also means that when you borrow a, a, somebody's PC in, in the office, the information is not cached there. So from a secure point of view, it makes the auditors happy, it makes the security officer happy. So. But because it's not localized, you depend on the speed of the cloud provider. So in a way, it depends when you search a, a mail message. You're not searching based on how fast your hard disk search or index the, the attachment. It's how Microsoft or Google search the thing. So you can say my SLA is that I should be able to search 1,000 messages and attachment in X minute if my bandwidth is 40 MB or 1 MB. So if, you can, if they can give you the SLA, that's easy. So we move away from how fast or how old my laptop is or how big my screen is to how fast the connection is. So zero performance, and this is the most painful thing. All of us know that when your mailbox, when people close it down or open it too fast, it doesn't have time to go to sleep mode. Your mailbox breaks. When your mailbox breaks, trust me, there's a multi-million dollar business out there on PST recovery. You know that, I know that. I, I've recovered mailboxes of MD, CFOs, and I cried sometimes when I could recover 80%. And they want the other 10, 20, 10%. Oh, man. So, as an IT manager, I'm also the chief apologist. I'm sorry the machine is slow. I'm sorry we can't buy you the machine. I'm sorry the network is slow. I'm sorry for everything except maybe your health. Huh? But we are part-time, all of us who've been in the IT business or work with IT, you expect two things from them. It's either something to be done now or why. Then you say, I'm sorry. But that's life. But it's good. But it's also essential that we are humble because we are not the IT gurus that sits in glass rooms and that. So if we learn to be good, to know when to say sorry, all, politici all politicians do that too, right? So we also know that the user respects us more because they know that we un they understand our limits. So it's good to know your limits, communicate it. So one of the limits we know is this thing. Sometimes we cannot do miracles. 
PST files are one of them, or even you're doing Lotus Notes NSF file. I use NSF file recovery. I've gone through that moment of recovering NSF file is encrypted and non-encrypted. Single address book. When we started with email, Singapore has its own email server, Malaysia has its own email server. So every now and then we must agree to synchronize address book because new staff joins, new staff leave. She married somebody else, so it changed her maiden name, so the address book is different. So we have to rename the address book. These are the common pain points. Address book changes, department changes. So if you have it in the cloud, everybody gets the same updates together. That's a good thing. Unless you have a very fast line and you sync all your address book across country, it's not easy. So this was a selling point too. So if you look at it as a sales manager, marketing manager, if you see this, you say, yeah, Pat, go for it because these are my needs. Hey, this, may be, this may be your needs, but one, two, three, it's mine. So second thing we talked about besides mail was forms. How do you get all these form approved? All right. So we realized that we choose about three forms. Um, those who travel a lot, so we have travel request form. Means this is a form that you must submit to your boss to approve. When you need to approve, what time you need to approve, what flight are you checking? So it is basic forms that you say that these are your forms to apply for travel requests, like preferred hotel. Uh, will you be need a cash in advance? Something some staff need cash advance because they're traveling for a long time. The credit card limit burst or so. So <laughs> cash. So electronic forms were for travel requests. And when you come back, you want to be able to attach your travel details and your claims. Taxi, uh, there's a column for forex, it means Thai baht, rupees or whatever. So they put it all in there and get approval. So this means that finance can cut your check and post it into your account when you can, before you even reach Singapore. So you can actually do all your claim traveling when you're on holiday or at home. So in the past, you fill in all your forms, blanco this, blanco that, and then give it to the finance to sign, your boss to sign, and if it's, a, if it's X period, another person to sign. So form processing, uh, you get this very common, your AXA, your NUH, and all that. So we persuaded, we look for the common business frustration of forms. Looking for somebody to sign. Looking for somebody in finance wanting to check, is this signature by this boss who's a, signatures are terrible. When you rush a guy, he signs badly. So from audit point of view, you want to know who signed it. How do you authenticate signature? What was the gap between the approval and the action? Did he buy first and claim or claim and buy? So these are the compliance things that electronic forms allow you to track or lock down. Last but not least is that sometimes finance want to refer to an old PO because when auditors come, then refer to all those PO's. So if you have it as an electronic, one good advantage is that you can retrieve those forms, reprint it, and file it if necessary. So the forms are good. And if you buy, there are form systems you can do in-house, on-premise. There are some very good ones. Notes is one of them, I know. I used them before. But for people to approve, they need to have the right password if they didn't forget it, the right VPN version level, and the right level of connections. So it gets very painful. But with just login among many companies, they can apply and approve the form, whether it's on a PC, an iPad, or even your handphone. So as long as they launch a browser, it is lightweight, no need heavy Java installation. So you just click approve, you just need to zoom in a bit more to see what was the amount. <laughs> and then you can, down, you can click on the link that's download the PDF uh, quotation. So you can compare the quotation against what the amount. So those things we look into because finance want to see where's the quotation. Then there are a lot of links. So from a compliance point of view, you have it there. So I guess forms is a pain point when you travel a lot and looking for many people to sign off and to check out. So we pitch it this, this way. Now, you, you ask me this magic question, how long did it take you to do let's say, email? Okay, uh, this is a very painful journey. We started this in 2009. So choose a vendor, choose a product, Microsoft, Google Apps, Singtel, Mail, there are many, many tools out there. 
some are hosted, some are not, some got SLA, some don't have, some have privacy agreements. So when we finally when we finally narrow down the, the vendors here, it was in January, so Christmas, you know. Huh? So we, we tested, how did we analyze it? We, we, we tested with b different people, some in sales, some in laptops, some in phones. You see, when you connect from a hotel, do you see a lag time when you open a document? So we tested with Google at the time, and at the time it was called BPOS. So it was called Microsoft previous naming was called Business Productivity Office System. Now it's called 365. Huh? Then we evaluated that on the function. Can it be used on laptops, handphones, all the different devices, XP, Mac, Linux, the, the various cons concepts. It worked. We, and we didn't do it ourselves. We, we involved people in different departments, marketing, those who travel a lot, those who are not so familiar in the showroom. So we tracked different layers of people and different experience. And it narrowed down to them. Then we went through privacy because data centers have to be certified. Now, Microsoft, for example, or Google, they will say geolocation. There are two definitions. Geolocation means that it moves from, it says Singapore to Hong Kong or to Malaysia. That's good. In case, in case of the earthquake should it happen, no, they, they move to another data center or it's a fire. But geolocation also gives you a concern. If your country or your, if your head office in Europe say that it cannot be in a country that is not uh, FTA or they don't respect privacy, then you can't, it can't be hosted. In, uh, the geolocation must be restricted in those countries that you agree to have. So you have to make sure geolocation is tricky from a legal point of view. The other thing is, if the server goes down or the mailbox is screwed up, they delete all the mailbox, can you guarantee Google or Microsoft be able to restore the last three months? Or worse, if the person is a, is a stockbroker or a high level person with sort of commitment and promises, if he deletes his mail after he sends out the mail, how do you track it? So, People like Google and Microsoft, who work in a lot of American companies, they provide it's called journaling. That means that if you want to say mailbox A, B, and C must be journal, they will track this mailbox into a read-only image. So that means from a forensic purpose, should you go into scandals, <laughs> you can trace did he write that mail or was the mail in, you know, in, uh, you know, copied or fake? So. We have to look at certain people and say, okay, these people have to be journaled, no matter what. So, like, the CFO and the legal officer. So, we have to address those compliance requirements. The legal agreement. Then, if the company goes bankrupt, Microsoft, or they give up the services, who, how do you do off-board? That means, how do you say, now what do I do with my mailbox? I'll go, and you know that happens with a lot of suppliers. So how do you deal with if it breaks down and totally cannot take over, hand over to another company? What would you do? Now, so this will call off, they call off boarding and on boarding, depending on which supplier you talk to. Privacy is obvious. Can you reset the password on your own, or how do you reset passwords? Can I read your mail if I'm an administrator? How do I read your mail? You know, how do you track that? So. So that was the next thing, that was a, a month-long <laughs> discussion with everybody. So the legal, the technical hurdle cleared, the usability hurdle cleared, the legal hurdle cleared. Then migration. In the old days, everybody is very territorial. Dot .sg, dot .com, dot .my, dot .th. How do you get all the dots together, right? So we realized that we were very lucky at that time, the internet business added few prefixes like dot .asia. So, so like my account, because we expect to grow our business within Asia, so it's called econo.asia. So one of the things we did was, how do you manage dot .sg, dot .my, and dot .th in, and move all this mail into a common place and yet rename people IDs? So a lot of testing were done in migration and we unfortunately or fortunately were using a technology that was too good. We believe in Domino, so I'm not. I'm a. But they had not 
a, a good cloud solution that support it. So we realize that with all these mobile devices, they are very uh, exchange friendly. So that was one of the decisions why we had to migrate from Domino's to Note. But the problem is that everybody checks the mail seven days a week. So we have to test how long it takes to migrate two countries' email into one. So a lot of effort of planning that how do you persuade users that no, don't read any more emails this Saturday or Sunday. No, public holiday, no, please. So we had, to, we had to work with everybody and luckily with the help of Singtel to block mails coming out or going in. So they had to do a, like, a, like a shutdown on the mail thing, a controlled shutdown. So we worked with telcos like Singtel, uh, IBM, Microsoft to ensure that the mails don't get lost in the transition. So a lot of simulation was done and we managed to get it right. Then we migrated. So the month of May, now May because it was a Labor Day, so Labor Day that year was very easy for me to remember. So it was a public holiday in Singapore and Malaysia. So everybody, we migrate. And we, we told those with big mailboxes, sorry, your mail will be available on Monday. Those with small mailboxes, Saturday. So we also ensure that those with mailboxes, big mailboxes, takes a longer time to upload, however bandwidth you have. So the big mailboxes, we say, oh, you naughty people, huh? you must wait a bit later because you've got big mailboxes. You have smaller. So it was the process of setting the expectation up. So we migrate. What happens on Monday morning? Everybody comes in and want to check the mail. So we had little kiosks at every store in Singapore. So we had an IT counter with a vendor next to us. So any follower who forgot their password or needs a new password or can't log in, this guy runs around their desk and checks for them. So we had two days of, um, you know, very good service, extremely good service with the vendor. To do it. So we ensure that we did that. But even before we did it on Monday, we had training even before it. So we had road shows to tell people that this is a new screen. It's like you use Yahoo, like you use Gmail, this is how it looks like. So we gave them things that they were familiar with. Because 80% of everybody used in our store used Gmail or Yahoo at that time. So it was okay. So they had a comparison. So that work, training and then training some people with the mobile devices <laughs> and such. And we had, don't call it post-mortem. Post-mortem means you die and you check the body. So we call it post-rollout review. The post-rollout review is that one of the problems with rollout is that some people use only 10% of the feature and if you can help them with another 10%, they will feel grateful. Like calendar, meeting room bookings, sharing your calendars across three countries. It's beautiful. I mean, to book a meeting for three, and to book a Webex for three countries on a common portal is the biggest saving we had. You know? so, the, we try to help people gain extra 10 more percent or 20 percent of the function that was available. So people see, oh, now I've got to take away what I have and what I gain. So that was an, a way also to build that feel good feeling that, hey guys, IT did a good project and they look after you, they handhold you up to the altar and even into the wedding car. So very good, huh? So that was the goal. Then we work with Microsoft and Singtel to monitor the network speed. During the cloud, what was the speed? After we migrate, how was is it slow? Is it fast? Because we know that sensitivity of mails are very frustrating. When you click a mail, you want it. When you instant message a person, what happened? So we work with vendors, the telcos, because cloud depends on telco, no matter what. So your, your network, whether it's Cisco or Trecom, is important. You know, look for all the bottlenecks. Because now you move from 200 people in your office to 500 people out of the office, in a way, this all in the cloud. So you have to plan your firewall, you plan your telcos. A lot of things you have to think about. This is your checklist. Especially when in three countries where the telco SLAs are different, and if you know the term, my ping rai, which means no problem. Everyone will say no problem to you, right? So you have to make sure that you quantify the SLAs and that. 
Now, we had to decommission it. Now, this is the important part. We waited six months or near six months to decommission it. Why? In case mailboxes that are large, people find that the conversion of the attachment was wrong. Some of our mailboxes are encrypted. So if something can unencrypt the mail, then we have to help them open the mail and unencrypt it and forward the mail. So one of the biggest problems is people who have sensitive documents. So if they can't access a migration effort, fails. Let's say 99%. That 1% can cause you to lose your job. So, keep the mail server <laughs> standby. Pay the extra cost, you are well off. Then, for the rest of the year, because some of your customers and vendors still have your old name cards, you know, old name cards, old email addresses, because we are migrating from in to out. And from one email account, ikeastore.com.sg or .my to ikano.asia, how do you make sure your customer don't lose contact of you and you don't lose contact of them? So we had to do a year of forwarding accounts and keeping them aligned. Just like some of you who moved from NCB to IDA, how do you forward all those IDs, right? <laughs> Same thing. Or when you merge your company, when your company buy up another company, then you are now a new company name. How do they move the accounts? Crimson Logic previously was TradeNet or IPAC.com. SG become crimson logic dot SG for example. So these are the things that you must think about when you move to the cloud to make it not just within your your colleagues but also with your customers. What we learn, yes, messaging in the cloud, which is your question. Yes, we reduce the provisioning for mobile workers who travel a lot from their devices and special VPN connection that's locked into a certain software or version of software like whatever. We also reduce, we, we have a lot of servers to maintain, so we remove from our system the mail servers, the proxy servers and all other servers that we need to support the mail ecosystem, instant messaging. Now, also when you're choosing a tool, make sure that there's a roadmap for this tool and the guy swear his life on it. So for, for mail, we start off with email, but Microsoft has got different tiers, one is link which allows you to instant message like you do with same time. If you're using notes, you have same time. Like your G Talk, Google Talk, whatever. So we can message each other, we can share a screen. So one of the benefits, I'll come to that in a while, we reduce servers, we reduce storage, because your mailbox size goes away. Uptime. Microsoft also guarantees that they will scan all viruses within, them, or you can highlight to them. So they have a hotline that if IT detects viruses, so they also hosted the antivirus and the malware and the spam online. You can turn on spam because we all know that spam is a way of life. Huh? I'm not sure about the laws that's coming to solve it, but at least we know it's a way of life. But in this case, we tested spam. So the spam rate was a lot low. And we worked with the Microsoft administrators to you know, target those hardcore spams. Some spams are blacklisted by country, some are by domains. So, we, our last time our mail was very slow because when big attachment comes in, the antivirus server or endpoint security scans a lot on those attachments. So now it's done in the cloud. So the, the scanning is done in the cloud. So some of the add-on servers for your mail systems like antivirus, surf control, phonography, and all those things goes away. So it's all in managed by the supply. So in your checklist, security, compliance. Security is a good thing because you ask what a common pain point is spam. So one of the benefits we move away is that we pay less money to subscription for, for antivirus for the mail thing because Microsoft puts it into the bill. So if you choose somebody else, make sure that they have some form of the first line of defense to deal with spam, to deal with viruses, to deal with Trojan horses in their mail system because they can be affected too. So you need SLA that if they affect, how do they lock down? So this was a big deal for us. Now, so things were working well. So our infrastructure, the load went down a lot, except for the Ping, Singtel, or Starhub, or whoever. It went up. Things don't go away because, yeah. First, the benefits. 
Remote, everybody got it. iPhone, any phone, even three phones can get it. Storage quota was no longer a fight every Monday morning or after the holidays. Security was managed better. As I said, remote wipes. Compliance for the phone processing or just login. We could fulfill the finance compliance. The staff could claim without coming to the office and then when they are suddenly go on holiday after a business trip. Now, what never changed? Never, I mean never. All cloud systems, things won't change in certain areas. Just like you buy a new PC or a new handphone, certain things won't change. You have to rekey in your account context or resync it, download your apps, all these things, right? So, we still had to manage our user expectation. That means when they travel, they assume they get better or convenient access to the mail. So you have to train them to know what they can get in, if the hotel has a lousy broadband. They shouldn't come to you. So you need to set. So when we get a phone call from somebody in Russia or in Holland or in Batam, we ask them, are you in a hotel? Which hotel? Not nice to ask that question, a bit too private. Huh? But we can also ask, what's the wireless speed? So we ask them to test on some site. So we ask a lot of innocent questions to assess where are they accessing the mail from. Then we ask them, what's, are you downloading an attachment? So we had to ask a lot of points. So certain SLAs to the business, to marketing, to sales, to finance are the same. Training won't go away. Because new staff joins, new staff forgets. They forget. We are humans. So you need to also train them, run workshops, road shows, just you know, like quick tips, like a, like a YouTube forum, you know. Chat with them for a few minutes. Run, work with training department to put IT training hours into it so that we train them. So we, in a way we are paying back to the user what they trust in us. It's, it's about paying back or paid forward. Now, um, vendors, telcos will promise you 99% SLA and they pay you back in credit, maybe $30 this month or whatever. You make sure you can quantify the SLAs. Promises are good, like wedding vows. But you need to measure it. Vendor compliance is, once you have it on the cloud, the risk is that the guy may run away or he forgets his promises to you. So make sure vendors are promised. Make sure your, your, your team, your IT team, knows how to measure it also. Because sometimes we trust the vendor too much, which is good, but we can't be blind. All right? Some things will never go away. You ask me, will we have other servers in place? Some things will not go away. ERP is one of them. Because very few vendors can commit to a SAP online or ERP or Navision online. And we use Navision, for example. If a customer comes to the store, he has to wait for the connection to dial up and to get approval to buy something. It's not good. So, we are a retailer, we pride ourselves on the brand capital or the brand image or goodwill. Or the, so some system is under your control. You must manage that. Some things will work out of the box because the supplier supplies you version 1.1. <laughs> so you may have to work with 1.1 for now and scale to when they are ready for 2.2. So the same thing. Make sure when they scale also, the, it works with your system. Some application needs new version of Java. Like we have some timesheets, isn't it? When you come in, you check your roster, your approved roster. Some of it needs a new version of Java to work. So make sure those details don't make you break your web browser. So comes a. Um, a half a million dollar question, depending on what system you're buying. What do you keep? Because we talk about cloud. What you should keep and what you shouldn't keep, or you sh what you can let go. Of course, this is a common question. Security, mission critical, what makes you different from another company? Okay, I'll give you a simple slide. Yeah, you can do cloud-based. Email is probably easiest to go. Instant messaging, we're all familiar with that. Now, Another thing we are thinking of in the future is that licensing. You know, 
copyright licensing. Sometimes to find out where is every PC in the company is very hard. <laughs> Some are traveling. So we are looking at tools that can, re can send information to a central server that tells you this PC has this software and this is the asset number. Because finance wants it. And if it's lost, how do you track it and lock it down? So Microsoft offer tools like Intune, like some companies offer like Snow. Snow is another tool that we're looking at that allows you to report assets on a monthly or a tertiary basis. So you can be sure that you can track where your assets are when you have a mobile workforce. With a mobile workforce, devices is the weakest and the strongest point. It's the weakest point when it gets lost. It's the weakest point when people install software that is not compliant or if I speak on behalf of BSA, we must support them. Uh. So the next direction we're looking at is here and here. Now, what are our decision points? Outages, can it break? If it breaks, do you have a manual process? So first thing to think about when you choose in a cloud is outages. What do you do if it break? Even the guy promised you will bring it up in one hour's time. What do you do in the meantime? One hour is a long, long time. If you have come to the store sometimes on bad days, I think I joined 1997 for my grey hair. There were days that sometimes you can't get a checkout for an hour, you know, wait one hour, just to, for the cashier to take a paper and calculate, give you a manual receipt. I mean, I admit it happened to us. We break our promises sometimes. You must plan for contingency. The, bit, the, the show goes on in IT. So plan for contingency. If the guy say one hour or two hours, so if you choose a tool to put in a cloud, a file server or a mail server, what can you go on if you don't have the mail or the cloud? Second thing, security. Do you trust the vendor or the tool? Do you trust your staff? Go through this very important checklist. Only when you trust yourself, the vendor and the staff, or you have done the risk mitigation, as they call it, there is risk avoidance, risk mitigation, and then for those who read a book called by Nassim Talib, Unfragile, if everything breaks, what do you do? It means when you fly over the cliff, do you have a parachute? So, security. When you put more and more things into the cloud, do you know where all your data is? Because if you forget to renew a contract with a vendor and the IT manager left or the account manager left, you say, yeah, where is it? <laughs> so sometimes it's important. If you put a lot of data in the cloud or you have many cloud vendors, you need to connect the dots. Secondly, that if you want to do business intelligence or business analytics, how do you connect all the data from all these sources to get a single picture or a single dashboard? So. If you go into the business analytics, which is a new challenge this, this few years, starting from last year, a lot of companies are selling ideas of BI in the cloud because they will host all the BI. Amazon that sells that, IBM sells that, HP sells that, even a lot of companies. But if they're going to collect all this data, there's a price. Microsoft sells Azure, for example. But can you connect the dots? And then what's the price to connect? There's a price. No free lunches, no free handphones, just the price. Okay. So we made some decisions. These are, oops, oops, okay, all right. Back, oh, back, ah, see, hope. So we realized that if the customer we meet is in our store, we must have it in the store. It's strategic because we can change our selling cycle and our tools ourselves. So from a strategic point of view, we protect our business. But also from a goodwill point of view, from a trust, we know our tools better. So we took away the administrator worries about email and put it in the cloud. But we allow him to have more time to focus on the store. So from a manpower planning point of view, it benefits us to focus IT resources into the areas that is mission critical, into the areas that is strategic. So this is one of them. Point of sales, I have not seen a very good cloud-based POS system yet. <laughs> have you? Point of sales? 
Mm, not yet, no? Okay. Now, this is important to us. It's becoming a reality in Singapore as well in parts of Malaysia and Thailand. PCI means payment card industry. It means that when you keep a customer credit card, they will ask you three questions. All of us cannot answer it because we're nervous to say yes to all of them. And we, they make us go through a, for PCI, some of them call it Amex or Visa, they make you go online and answer a 200 page question. That's, trust me, there's a 200 page question and there is a 100 page question. They will question you on three main simple points. How do you keep customer detail? Do you store it in your PC, on your database? If you say yes, how do you encrypt it? So, do you store customer details, yes or no? Then you got a lot of questions. If you say yes, <laughs> you go through this question and it goes to 200 pages. Secondly, if you store it, who can access it? From remote or internal? So they'll test you in your firewall rules, your internal rules, a lot of security mechanisms are tested. And the third one, and that's a dangerous question. How long do you store it for? Forever? Or when the customer says, take it off. That's a, very, that's a privacy thing. Take it off. In, the, in Europe, there's this law that if the person says, take my name off your list, you must. If you don't, there is a fine. And the, customer, the person can call any government authority, the, the ombudsman, to come in and check. So PCI, so if you're going to move your retail system to the cloud, make sure PCI is checked if you're a retailer. Because it will hit you sooner or later. So for us, the trust with the customer is important. So we cannot, in this case, put all our customer information in the cloud. Not yet. Until we are sorry, that until we find the right level of compliance. That's why with geolocation, the data center can be in Singapore for eight hours, and Hong Kong or another place. Now, which country laws apply? So PCI is one of the areas that we have differentiated ourselves in retail system as well. So it's in, store, in the building, in the store, with a data center, with SLAs, with multiple redundancies. But the, the administrator is happy now because he don't worry about mailbox, mail quotas and that. So he has a peace of mind. Our user has a peace of mind also. So this was the final slide. But when you choose the cloud system, these are my experience. My experience, I mean, not the 100% checklist, but this is where my, I come from. Okay?